Hi everyone, today I'm going to be playing Jump Ship, which is the second game in the Card Ventures series. And if you saw the Stowaway 52 playthrough, then it plays similarly to that. There are some differences in the gameplay as well as the story and the setting. So in the setup we have four decks, the same as in the first one, but we also have this deep end deck which we shuffle. And if certain things happen to us, we'll be drawing a random card from that. And now the decks here represent different ships. So we have the Black Bounty, which is our ship, the Briny Turtle, the Crimson Cannonball, and the Salty Sapphire. So in this game, we are pirates, as you might have noticed. So the prologue is, you've had a good career as the captain of the Black Bounty, but you've been thinking it's about time to cash in your treasure and retire. But before you do, you might as well have one last adventure. As luck would have it, three other pirate ships have dropped anchor next to yours in Bedlam Bay. Loot the other ships and grab as much gold as you can before retiring to Mermaid Beach. And so that's where we are. The setup is similar as I've shown, and the start is a little bit different. Instead of just picking any random card, it's just any card from the deck of our ship. We might go to these ships later. So I will, let's go for 11. Oh, they go up to 10, let's go for six. Just thinking the, the other decks went up to 14. I think the other ships are bigger than ours though. So here we go. We start our adventure like this. So the Black Bounty is under siege. There's no telling how much treasure the other pirates have stolen from you. Before you venture out to steal it all back, you had better grab whatever gold is left on board. So see if you still have any loot left in your quarters or go to the safe to see if your gold is gone. And I'll just say, just in case you didn't see the other playthrough, this is like a choose your own adventure book, but in a card game with a few differences to it. So we'll always have a bit of text telling us what's going on, and then we'll have a choice to make that will take us to the next card. And so let's, let's go to the safe. That seems to be an obvious place. And this has a treasure value on it. It's not like Stowaway 52 where they all had points. The certain ones have treasure and these go in our treasure pile. We might have to discard these at some point. Uh, they might save us from losing the game, but they go there in our treasure pile for now. So here we go. Number two, as you survey your ship, you discover that the other pirates have stolen all of your gold, but don't worry. With all of their ships anchored next to you in Bedlam Bay, you'll steal it back in no time. So we can sneak aboard the Briny Turtle or swing over to the Crimson Cannonball. Hmm. Let's go to the Briny Turtle. So it's number 10 in the green deck. And this doesn't have a treasure value in it, so it's just taken out of the game. So we want green 10, which isn't the bottom one of this deck. Here we go. So you make your way to the briny turtle and find a beautiful treasure chest just sitting there, ripe for the taking. You can't wait to get your hands on the gold inside, but you'll have to wait because it's locked. So we can either search for a key or try to break it open by jumping on it. Let's, let's search for the key. So no treasure on this, so that card's just gone. So let's go to number two. Oh dear. While you're busy looking, Captain Pegg's pesky parrot plunges down and pounces on part of your gold. Discard your top treasure card. So whenever that happens, we go to our treasure pile and the one treasure that I did have is now non-treasure. So we can head to the captain's quarters to try and find this key or head to the ship's bow. Let's see. And this is a little <laughs> bit cheating because I can see what number one is, but let's go for number six. because I want to find this key. So, you dash down the deck and run straight into the ship's lieutenant. You handily defeat her in a quick duel and win her gold. As you watch her flee, you spot both a ladder and a swaying piece of rope. Let's climb the ladder up to the mast so we can keep this here in our treasure pile because we just won two in that duel. And let's go to green seven. Here we go. You're halfway up the mast when you encounter a flock of seagulls that almost knocks you off the ring. So we can run so far away or keep climbing. Let's, let's keep climbing. I'm not afraid of no seagulls. Here we go. Oh dear. Well, this wasn't the right choice to try and find this key. 
So you're atop the mast of the briny turtle. From here you have clear access to both the salty sapphire and the crimson cannonball. So I can throw a grappling hook over to the salty sapphire or swing over to the crimson cannonball. Let's go to the crimson cannonball. So red 13 is our next destination. Here we go. Wow. As you crash land on the deck, you knock over some barrels and find the legendary Ocean's Chalice. So we have just got four treasure points here, but also we've got this dolphin on here and this is special. So if we, if we would go overboard, so we go overboard if we pick an option and that card has already gone, it's not in one of the decks anymore because we've already been to it. Then we are overboard, we go right to the end of the game, we wash up on the shore and count our points. But I can choose to discard a card with dolphins and the dolphin will quite happily take me back to my ship and we can pick a random card from my ship and try to carry on the adventure. But in doing so, I am giving up four points. So you have to think, can you make those points back? But anyway, back to the game. So I can seek more treasure on the main deck or seek more treasure below deck. Let's go below deck. So that's gonna be red nine. Here we go. So you slide down some stairs and find yourself in the ship's well-stocked galley, or as the landlubbers call it, the kitchen. There's plenty of fish and chips, lemons, and is that sushi? Go figure. So help yourself to some semi-fresh sushi or head across the hall to the crew's quarters. Let's go to the crew's quarters. And that's a treasure card that can go in the pile. Oh, I'm on red. Number 14, I think that's the last one. There we go. You break into the crew's quarters and a cowardly ensign surrenders to you before you can even draw your sword. You take his golden watch as he dives through the porthole. You then notice that nobody is at the wheel of the ship. So I can either take command of the Crimson Cannonball or swim back to my own ship. Let's take command. So I have got another dolphin and two more points there. And let's take card number 12. Here we go. Oh dear. You grab the wheel and laugh with glee as you marvel at your pirate prowess. Just then, Captain Peg's parrot pops in and pilfers part of your purse. Discard two treasure cards. So let's do that now. It's ones of my choosing. And it might as well be the ones without dolphins on. I might as well keep the higher value ones that have also got dolphins on. So I lost some points by making that choice. So I can head below deck to avoid another parrot attack, but I think I've already done that. So let's chase the parrot into the rigging. So red four. So you take a step, but your foot gets caught in a rope and now you're dangling upside down from the rigging. You can see enemy pirates below you. So I can attempt a sneak attack from above or cut myself free. Let's attempt a sneak attack from above, number five. And that's got a gold on it. It's number five there, yes. Instead of just hanging around the Crimson Cannonball, you pick the pocket of the ship's first mate. He never even notices. Below you see a fleet of lifeboats. Above you see a ladder to the mast. So I can commandeer a lifeboat or climb the mast. Have I been up the mast? Let's, let's commandeer a lifeboat. It might be time to get off this ship. So that's got some treasure on it. So number 11. You start to row the lifeboat, thinking that your plan is working perfectly until you accidentally hit a squid with one of your oars. One of its slimy tentacles pulls you from the boat and throws you onto the briny turtle. So we're back on the green ship. Draw a random card. Let's just take this one. Here we go. Gangway. You are running across the deck of the briny turtle when the ship starts to rock back and forth. You lose your balance and fall towards the water. So I can save face and do a swan dive and just take my chances in the deep end. That's what this symbol means. Just draw a deep end card. Or I can make a splash and do a cannonball dive. Let's, let's make a splash. Number five. Oh no. Squid vicious. You're frozen in mid-air when suddenly a giant tentacle rises from the water, catches you and hurls you towards the Crimson Cannonball. So we are going straight back. That squid is just tossing us back and forth. So red 10, it's still there luckily. 
Splash! You land in the water next to the Crimson Cannonball. Spying a flash of gold, you grab a golden shrimp-shaped pendant. Surely you'll be able to pawn this prawn for at least three gold. So, I can climb aboard the ship or dive for more gold and take my chances underwater. Let's just climb aboard the ship. Here we go. You climb aboard and see that nobody is at the ship's wheel. You're in command of the Crimson Cannonball now. Just remember, with great power comes great treasure. So I can turn towards the high seas or abandon the wheel and go looting. Let's turn towards the high seas. You're not sure if it was something you ate or if the waves just got choppy, but you start to feel a wee bit seasick. I can stare at a fixed point on the horizon or toss your cookies overboard. Hmm, let's let's stare at a fixed point on the horizon. Have I already done that yet? Nope. Here we go. You look out from your perch and what's that on the horizon? It's the Queen's Navy. Better escape before they catch you. Leap over to the briny turtle or swing over to the salty sapphire. And since we haven't been there yet, let's go to the salty sapphire. So this is blue number nine. Here we go. You land on the deck of the Salty Sapphire, followed by a cannonball which misses you by inches. The ship is under heavy fire, and you notice that it's looking less and less seaworthy and more and more sinkworthy. Jump ship or dodge the cannonballs and grab more gold. I am going to grab some more gold, I think. Number 12. Oh no. You're about to pry open a barrel when, oh no, here comes Captain Peg. She always beats you in battle. Sneak off to a lifeboat or hide in a barrel. Let's, let's hide in a barrel, number two. Oh no, here he is again. Captain Peg's pet parrot is such a practiced pickpocket that you hardly notice as it grabs some treasure in its talons. Discard a treasure card. So let's just get rid of just any of these ones with no dolphin on. And I can search for replacement treasure or search for that blasted parrot. Let's, let's search for this parrot. It's been bothering me all game. Here we go. Kablam! The timbers shiver and suddenly there ain't no floor no more. You fall into a dark cargo hold. As your eyes adjust, you think you spy a glint of gold in the distance. So I can go for the gold or light a lantern. Let's light a lantern. Number 11. Oh, wow. Here we go. What's this you see? A treasure map? With this, you can dig up five gold pieces, but only if you can make it to Mermaid Beach in your next three turns or sooner. So if I don't make it to the end of the game in the next three turns, then this goes into the discard pile and I don't get those five points. So let's, let's I can go to the bow or the stern. Let's go to the bow. Number 14, so let's keep track that this is one turn. You're at the bow of the Salty Sapphire. From here, you can see a treasure chest floating away in the water. It's a wee bit further away than you're used to jumping, but you might just make it. So take a leap of faith and jump, or stay on the Salty Sapphire. Well, I think that the deep end will take me to the end of the game, so let's take a leap of faith and jump. So. Let's take the top card. I shuffled these up at the start, so... It's your lucky day. First, there's a pelican floating by with a gold coin in its mouth. Second, you landed right by a rope ladder to the Crimson Cannonball. So I go to red number two. Which isn't there. So, I can either wash up overboard now and automatically go to Mermaid Beach, or I can give up a dolphin and go somewhere else. But I would lose this treasure map. I think, rather than spoiling the whole game, because I've got a lot further than I thought I would, let's just, let's just go overboard and automatically wash ashore on Mermaid Beach. And this is what we have here. We can count up our treasure. So I have three, eight, ten, 15, 24. I have 24, which puts me at first mate. Congratulations, you made it to Mermaid Beach Alive. Now you can spend your retirement relaxing in a hammock and sipping coconut milkshakes while watching the sunset. 
and we are first mate rank. There is more to be had, but uh, that was a surprisingly good run. That is Jump Ship. And, oh, I didn't know to mention at the beginning, this is by a different designer from uh, the first game, Stowaway 52. The concept is by Floyd Pretz, who did Stowaway 52, and they are using the concept on different designers to come up with different things. And if you've seen both, you'll see that this is quite different in certain ways than Stowaway 52. So that is it for Jump Ship. I hope you enjoyed that, and it gives you a good idea of what the game's like. If you'd like to see the other Car Adventures games, Stowaway 52, I'll put a link on the screen. Or if you'd like to hear what I think of the Car Adventures, then I'll put another link on the screen. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.